Throughout the United Kingdom, children are under assault, unnecessarily diagnosed with a mental disorder and given dangerous and addictive psychotropic drugs. By far the most common of the diagnoses is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, which can label a child as mentally ill, not on the basis of any scientific lab testing, but by means of a behavioral checklist. The diagnosis is given on a load of behavioral characteristics. If you're a psychiatrist and you've got a 15-minute interview with a parent, the parent will list all of the worst case scenarios. All of the statements the parent is making can be ticked off on the DSM criteria for diagnosing ADHD. The problem with the psychiatrist and the psychiatric diagnosis, there's no verification that there's a disease. You take ADHD or ADD. Well, you know, this is normal childhood behavior under certain circumstances. Bored child, uh, you know, stuffy room, um, you know, lack of physical activity. In situations like that, those behaviors would be entirely normal and expected. The diagnostic criteria for ADHD are behavioral, entirely behavioral. There is no biomarker. And the kinds of behavioral aberrations they are looking for are likely to occur in boys. Um, if you went back to the Roman Empire, or even earlier, and, and followed time through to the present day, you would find that boys have always behaved like that. To counter charges that these children are being drugged not for any medical disease, but for being children, psychiatrists claim without proof that ADHD is a real physical disorder stemming from a chemical imbalance in the brain. I think if a psychiatrist is suggesting that it is a chemical imbalance that's causing the difficulty, then we need some evidence that that's the case. You must clearly establish that there is a clear anatomical problem that leads to the misbehaviors, or that there is a clear chemical imbalance that leads. It can't be done. It has not been done. There's no indication whatsoever of chemical imbalances, and, and frankly, we've been waiting long enough for evidence of this. Although the chemical imbalance theory has been debunked by psychiatry's own official publications, psychiatrists still use it to convince more and more parents to give young children very powerful stimulant drugs, such as Ritalin, known to cause a wide variety of serious side effects. Take the example of Daniel Woolvitt, whose life is still impacted today from the stimulants he took as a child. Well, they originally told us in the beginning that, that it would calm him down, uh, allow him to concentrate, um, which would help him at school and allow him to uh, join in with other children. The doctor told us, you know, that it would help Daniel. We just believed with what he, they said. I was on Ritalin for 3 to 13, also I say 10 years. They were constantly... Um, putting him on the Ritalin and then increasing the dosage and you could see the effects that was 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 happening to him where he was totally spaced out, didn't really know what was what was going on. Having chest pains, being sick, getting all dizzy. There'd be incidents where like he could get sometimes violent. He used to hit you, he went through a phrase of biting. And I do remember keep thinking I wanted to kill myself and all that sort of thing. And in the end I just had to phone up the social worker and ask to come take my son. I can't even talk. I feel that the drugs have damaged him in as, in, in as far as he's got ten, ten years of his life missing. That I haven't got no memory from, because when you took written it wipes your memory out, so I don't really have much memory of being on it until I come off it. That's when I started getting all the memory. You never told the truth of what it does. If you can't remember your daily life, you're certainly not going to remember things you're learning at school. Well, I wish you know, I could actually go into a restaurant and read a proper menu and all that because of my moderate learning difficulty I've got. We were told that, that it would help him, but it didn't help him at all. I thought it was just me, but I didn't have no idea it was the drug that was doing it. As a parent, you're not told 
of the dangers that this drug can do. Um, because looking back on it now, I would never have put my son on it. Statistics show that Daniel is not alone. In 1994, only 4,000 prescriptions for stimulants were written. Today, that number has soared by 187 times to a total of three quarters of a million. Psychiatrists want the world to think that giving children these drugs is perfectly safe, effective, and well tolerated. Well, how safe could it be to actually give a child a medication that the oncologists are increasingly considering as chemotherapies for cancer? Some of these drugs have proven to have very serious effects far way beyond of treating what they are supposed to be treating. The use of drugs often affects vital organs in your body and these organs are gradually being destroyed very frequently by the use of these medications which in, a, in, in turn shorten life. You're going to have thousands or hundreds of thousands of extra people with diabetic conditions, hundreds of thousands of people with actual nervous damage um, perhaps millions of people with serious nervous damage. There is also in the UK an increasing awareness that um, people who become addicted really take years to resolve these problems. So the drugs are often worse than the, the initial problem which it was supposed to resolve. This is not science. This is, this is snake oil salesmanship. And it is massive business. It is a huge business in Britain. Every year, an estimated 400,000 children are diagnosed with a mental disorder and given powerful psychotropic drugs. Enough children to fill Wembley Stadium four times over. And the numbers are growing. Under the guise of a health initiative, authorities are now importing American-style mental health screening programs that use vague and open-ended questionnaires to assess psychological illness. These screening exams are basically designed to get information to where a child can receive a diagnosis and a label so that they're eligible to be drugged. They want to control any kind of behavior that they consider to be bad and socially unacceptable. So if a child objects, if a child does something that they consider to be inappropriate, not illegal, but inappropriate, then they want to try to remove the tendency to do that through the drugs. The use of psychiatric drugs to, if you like, act as, act as a chemical kosh to unhappy children is a sign of our disordered society. We like to think as a society we look after our children, we care for our children, we're, we're, we're appalled at the, the whole paedophilia thing that's come out in recent years. We're appalled at that. We're appalled that anybody could ever abuse children in such a way, and yet we're doing this through medicine. Today, such screening programs are being quietly installed across all sectors of British society, especially to children. And with a stimulant drug market worth over 33 million pounds a year in the UK alone, mental health screening and drugging is big business. The leaders of tomorrow, our children, need your help. Without public outcry, children will not be protected against the plague of psychiatric drugging. Every child has a gift or a talent. And surely as a society, wherever we are around the world, we all benefit by developing what is in that person, allowing them to use what they have. Instead of sending people into hospital medicating them. If we looked at other alternative ways uh, to treat them and uh, we may achieve a better results than, uh, than just uh, simply giving them these uh, exogenous chemicals. There is nothing to lose by looking at alternatives, whether that's behavioural management or dietary intervention or perhaps looking at toxicity in the environment. Where is the problem with going along that route first? When you take a child and you drug the child, you destroy the child's chances for development. Children need to be protected. They don't need to be drugged.